What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Overwatch League Report. I'm your host, Tamor, filling in for Brian this week. Uh, but I'm joined, as usual, by Ben. How's it going, Ben? Hello, hello. Uh, I know we uh, we missed uh, a little bit last week. I was, uh, was a little under the weather, uh, pretty, uh, pretty sick. But, you know, we're back here uh, to talk a little bit about some uh, some news that's come out in the last uh, week or so. So yeah. this, is, uh, this is fun. There's tons to talk about, including uh, the Stage 3 finals, which we will brush on just because we missed last week, but there's also just a ton of uh, news in general with trades, as well as the 222 lock, and even um, some news about the 2020 season. So we'll go into those later in the show, but I guess, yeah, so let's start off with Stage 3 finals, which to me, they were probably like the most exciting matches uh i've seen this season at least the finals were just so uh <laughs> emotionally draining like going back and forth um so uh obviously the shanghai dragons took it back this is a team that i mean as everyone knows they were like they secured the last place spot in this in season one going zero and 40 and what's considered you know the worst season-long performance by any professional sports team ever or any you know uh, professional franchise and uh so when it comes to their their win it's 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 really nothing less than history yeah no it's uh it's actually act really very incredible because i mean we had in the first two stages the same two teams in the finals you had uh san francisco versus vancouver and you know shanghai comes in here and beats both Vancouver and then San Francisco back to back after also beating NYXL. Yeah. So like they had the hardest road through the playoffs, and they, uh, they, you know, they destroyed it. And like you said, that that uh, that finals match, you know, went to seven maps. It was almost a reverse sweep uh, for the San Francisco Shock. Uh, it was like crazy intense because you know. You know, coming uh, out of map three, you're like, oh my god, the dragons are going to do this. And then maps four and five and six are going, you're like, oh my god, they're going to throw away. <laughs> what are they, yeah. What's going on now? <laughs> Their luck has run out. I, I really was so nervous at that point. I was like, because yeah. I don't know, it, maybe it's clear from my past comments. I'm not a huge fan of Shock. I'm not a huge fan of, uh, you know, they, they, I think they're, they're a really, really good GOATS team. But some of the players are kind of restricted to that. Um but you know they definitely they definitely pulled it back together. They so like you said, start off three losses in a row. Shanghai dominating, um, and then they made a lot of switches. And I think that's really that's really what won it back. Spe- specifically with Choi Yobin on the Roadhog, really yeah. really sick plays on, with poles and just shutting down their Farah. You know, just shutting down these like the, you know these these. Uh, squishy characters as we like to call them um yeah it, but then obviously shanghai came back and won it in the end which i feel like nobody nobody can like feel bummed about even san francisco fans because this is just such a such an incredible story you know as far as it goes you know in esports and even even regular sports yeah, I mean, yeah, people joke that, you know, uh, Owl is an anime, so, like, this is, like, the, the <laughs> anime, uh, like, storyline of, like, the the underdog team, uh, you know, obviously, they're, it's a totally different lineup, pretty much, uh, like, uh, Gregory and uh, Dia are still there with their kind of benched, so, um, so, like, you know, it's a totally different uh, lineup, we got, you know, Gamsu Ding, uh, DM, uh, Koma Luffy and Young Jin usually oh, yeah. uh, in that role. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, like it's it's a totally different line, but it's the same organization, it's the same fan base, you know, the same fan base who struggled presumably through uh, 40 uh, just soul crushing losses in the season one. Yeah. Uh, for them to get three is uh, it's definitely a huge moment for, uh, for the league in general. Uh, and you know, uh, you know, the, the shock, you know, as you kind of uh insinuated, have kind of created themselves as like this villain, uh, <laughs> like organization. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we have like a super is kind of like the face of the team, and super is you know, very has like a very big personality and yeah. you know, talks a lot of trash. And you know, I personally, 
uh, like that. And I think it's, <laughs> it's entertaining. It brings a lot to to the league and like having personalities and having like heroes and villains and people to root for and against. I think is very important. So I yeah. I, I appreciate uh, what like Super and Sinatra bring, what the Shock bring. Um, but yeah, it's they were they were like they were the best team story wise for the uh, the Dragons to to come up uh, against and win. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, you know, we're obviously on talk uh, transition here and talk about two 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 roll lock for uh, stage four. Right, but having them perform so well on these DPS uh, characters, especially you know Ding on the Farah, for instance, and like DM's uh, Widowmaker, etc., uh, it really uh, lends you know a lot of uh, credence to the fact that they could be a top contender for Stage Four, and then going into the season playoffs. Exactly, and that's sort of the question uh, that I think we're all asking, at least with the two-two-two lock, which has been confirmed. Uh, now, uh, going forward, will will Shanghai and even you know some of these teams like like San Francisco, who were so good at goats, will these teams uh, still come out ahead? And uh, you, you know that this this there's one other match that happened in the state tree finals that that really stood out to me, which is Titans versus Shanghai, and Shanghai looks looked super super dominant, but I think it was on it was on um, Nimbani. Titans came back with four tanks, and this was just this was a comp that Shanghai could not get breakthrough with, obviously with their DPS. Um, mm-hmm. And this is the sort of thing that obviously we wouldn't be able to see in uh, the two two uh, two meta. So you know, it, yeah. So I, I guess that, that's a, a long version of asking this question. But what teams really are going to come out ahead with this this meta? I think Shanghai. Is going to remain a, a really strong team. No, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I think that it, it's it's tricky because a lot of these, you know, DPS stars have been relegated to these non-DPS roles, um, and they've been playing roles like Brig and Zarya, um, and or at the very least, Sombra, uh, who may or may not be uh, like able to see play in a meta, which might be like, you know, bunker, sniper-based. Um, mm-hmm. So I think that, you know, we, we have to talk, like, we kind of have to predict which DPS uh, heroes are going to be the most prevalent, and then, you know, which players are going to be the biggest stars on those heroes. So right. you think about, like, uh, if Widow is going to see a resurgence, if we're going to see a situation where there's, like, these Arisa bunkers where you set up uh, like long sight line snipers, especially when you see maps like Havana still in the map pool. Um, you can see, you know, obviously DM is a phenomenal Widowmaker, mm-hmm. but you know, we see Carpe, you see uh, like even uh, like somebody like a, like a Nene, you could see, yeah, we could see Pine the return, obviously, yeah, back return of Pine. Soon. I was gonna say that'd be awesome. I, I would love to have Pine back, definitely. Yeah. Big Boss Pine gets to actually uh, see some playtime. The the big question is really going to be which DPS heroes are going to be meta once this kind of like stabilizes, uh, and whether you're going to get like you know Genji meta or you're going to get Sniper meta if you're going to get Tracer meta. Uh, like if if people just play like people could just play Dive right, and then we'll see a lot of Tracer Genji uh, picks, and yeah. they're going to be there might be like this rock paper scissors thing with like. Uh, dive and bunker, and you know maybe counter dive, which uh, bunker could be able to tear apart, uh, like some kind of ball comp that plays like a diva. Um, you know we have I, I don't know whether uh, you know because we have you know t- t- just today the new hero uh, Sigma was finally announced. I don't know when Sigma is going to show up if, if it's going to show up by like the season playoffs. Yeah, um, but. Uh, that could really change up a lot of things. But going into the stage four, I think that you know, wh- what what do you think the, the meta might look like? Obviously, this is uh, such an open question. We have we really yeah. have no idea. I I, I think we're going to see a lot of Doomfist. I think Doomfist is the sort of hero that can keep himself alive for a little while and get some of these some of these picks, mm-hmm. uh, you know, on his own as opposed to. Yeah, I mean, I, or even you know, Tracer. I think these are the sort of heroes we're going to see who can get picks without getting destroyed because they're so squishy um 
even I mean, I do feel like Sombra. I feel like we're gonna see teams with like Doomfist and Sombra as their two DPS, yeah. and then you know we might even see much more um, uh, Mercy going forward, which. You know, I, I wouldn't mind that at, uh, as well. I mean, anything anti goats is like honestly, I think it'd be like a real fun trip. So, I think Doomfist is yeah. the big one for me. Yeah, I mean, you definitely see like the the Element Mystic Doombra Hackfist comp um, mm -hmm. with uh, which is basically like the goats shell, but without Diva and Brig, and instead you have Sombra Doomfist. We could definitely see. I'm sure we we have a lot of really capable farmers in the league. I'm sure we'll mm -hmm. have. Uh, a lot of uh, farmer C setups with maybe kind of like uh, uh, like some kind of Winston or Bunker core uh, to support it. Uh, similar, like kind of similar to what uh, Shanghai did, but instead of the triple DPS, maybe like a Winston Diva or something like that. Yeah, exactly. And I think <coughs> we're going to see uh, a bit more of you know uniqueness in each team, where you know teams like Shanghai with you know, with with the Widow and the Farah and Mercy, and that might be, like, something they play around with, as well as, like, you know, Chengdu Hunters, they're, they'll probably find their footing with, like, something with Ball, and and pro they'll probably as well keep Farah. Um, but it's, like, I, I have a hard time seeing a team like, uh, you know, like, like, I guess, Soul, doing something like that or even like LA Valiant or like, you know, uh, I guess a lot of these teams or even San Francisco shock. It's like what, where I, I have a hard time imagining them sort of in the two, 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 just because I haven't been, been in it uh, for so long. Sinatra is obviously like a really, really good DPS. And I, there was even a moment where they, they, sh they showed in the broadcast against Shanghai where he was like, guys, I really think I should play Tracer. Like, if I go with Tracer, I can destroy them, whatever. And they were, like, very indecisive about it. And I don't think he ever really fully commit mm -hmm. to that. But, you know, that's, you know, if, if he did switch, maybe the, maybe we would, we would have seen a different outcome. But, you know, it doesn't yep. feel like uh, they're daring enough to quite go there yet. But, uh, yeah, I guess uh, just to bring it all together, I, I, I do think we're going to see differences between each team and kind of the specialties will come out see the thing is with the shock though is they have a very deep roster and we kind of saw that a little bit with map one in the finals where they brought out uh oh, yeah. players like uh like striker like they have striker and nevix and architects you know on the bench like they have a very deep bench like striker is possibly the best tracer in the league uh so like you know obviously you could say uh, the starting six that we've seen uh are really only good at goats and like even mm. if you say that and like commit to that as an argument uh like they have plenty of of the depth of depth to their bench like we even saw like smurf come in as an uh, alternative uh main tank playing the zarisa bunker thing so maybe we might see some more smurf if uh, the team finds that he's more comfortable playing uh, arisa based comps um i think that you know like i think that san francisco will be fine i don't i don't know whether we'll still see the same starting six uh, coming into the stage, right. but I think that some combination of the players they have at their availability uh, will perform at least well enough for them to get uh, a buy spot into the uh, the playoffs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, so I guess what teams do you think will be uh, at the top of the league? I mean, I, I see like NYXL in London coming out ahead once again, you know, or I guess New York's been up there, but London has definitely been lacking this season. And I think that's, you know, due to due to goats and the prevalency. But I, I see them coming out ahead going forward. No, yeah, I mean definitely looking at like last season, the stars of the London Spitfire were Profit and Birdring. And now Profit mm -hmm. and Birdring have been like uh, for the first three stages, Profit and Birding have been very much neutered because of Ghosts, and so being able to see them come out and play uh, the heroes that they're more comfortable with uh, will be really awesome. And then all, also talking about uh, successful teams from last season, I think the Fusion are going to be uh, mm -hmm. very... Uh, this is going to very much help the Fusion, who have struggled uh, a lot on Goats and have had issues with, uh, with Carpe playing Zarya, and them like working together within that composition. I think that when you put uh, players like EQ and Carpe on heroes that they're more comfortable with, uh, you'll get the Philadelphia fusion that you saw in season one. Yeah. What about some of these teams that are new to this season? Uh, who we we haven't we've only seen them in the current meta. Like I'm thinking of like Paris, you know, Atlanta, 
I mean, even like Florida, like I feel like, you know, they have Saya player. They, they did, you know, they didn't do terribly uh, in their last few games um, as the meta is shifting. Do you see these uh, teams who are, I think, kind of in the, the the second half, let's say, you know, the not in the top eight? Um, do you see these teams coming out ahead, or there are are the current top teams just so good that they can adapt and, yeah. Uh, I think a team that we could talk about is the uh, you know this is this is gonna sound silly, but I think we could talk about the Washington Justice, honestly. Really? Uh, yeah, who have a brand new tank line that they. Uh, they yoinked away from uh, Team Envy, um, mm. and uh, in uh, Elevote and um, uh, Lulsich, and I think that they are incredibly. Uh, they they have a lot of chemistry together. Those two, and they're obviously uh, a very strong Elevote, especially is a phenomenal Diva player and uh, just a great off tank in general. Uh, and I think that. Uh, one of the issues that Washington Justice has seen has been their tank line, uh, particularly uh, Sansa. But even like Giannis has been, uh, like you know, very much uh, not performing up to scratch. So I think that with the new tank line coming in, with this switch to uh, to two two two, where we can see players like uh, like Corey in a uh, in a situation where he's a lot more uh, comfortable playing things like you know Tracer and Widow. Uh, McCree, etc. I think that you know we're gonna we're gonna see a lot uh, a lot more uh, potential from this team who have uh, you know historically been the worst or the second worst team in the league. <laughs> I know that yeah. that's cra- you know crazy. I mean, you know, I, I think the Washington Justice are going to be fine in Stage Four. Wow. Uh, okay. Will that lead? Will that lead to them making the playoffs? I think they probably burned enough of their uh, their. Uh, <laughs> it's probably it's probably burnt enough of their record. Uh, heading into stage four, where it's unlikely that they make the playoffs, but I think this could be the start of some kind of like a comeback story going into next season. Yeah, totally. Maybe maybe they'll be the Shanghai of uh, 2020. Who knows? But I mean, I'm definitely not going to hold my breath for that. But I I do what I definitely you you've convinced me enough that I I'm really curious how that'll work out. For Listen, sure. their first mat their first match of the stage is against the Defiant, who have been really really not great uh this past stage especially uh where they're kind of still trying to find their footing with their new players so Mm. um yeah i mean i I think that's definitely a winnable match for them um Mm. you know obviously putting faith into a team that is uh you know shown time and time again that you should not put faith into them uh seems pretty crazy on the surface but yeah uh, uh, yeah yeah (laughs) i i think that you know this is this is the right move. I think that we talk about what the Mayhem have done with their roster, and uh, I've been very critical of that. And I think we've seen that it's like made slight improvements, uh, but not to the point where they're like actually winning a number of matches. Uh, I think that this these are this is a move, um, especially heading into the two 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 roll lock, where uh, this could actually be a way for the team to be more successful. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned that they're going through some. They're going through some trades. Uh, what other teams are going through some trades? I know. I know there were uh, a bunch uh, since last, last time we recorded. Yeah. Uh, so uh, just to get out of the way, because we talked about the dragons a little bit. The dragons did pick up uh, Iziaki from the Valiant, who uh, I know. Uh, you know, you're you're a big uh, <laughs> proponent of the Valiant sticking with Kariv. So I think that. Uh, you know, you you were pretty happy with that in terms of like the Valiant's decision, so you know that they were kind of locked in now. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. But in terms I, of I, I I do like Izayaki uh, as a player. I think he's he's really really strong. But I do think that it's uh, maybe a better suit for him being on uh, the Dragons, and it makes them a, a bit of a more uh, well-rounded team. But, right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like, I think that you know. Uh, Luffy definitely showed himself uh, to be a very capable uh, flex support player in mm. the playoffs, but maybe they want uh, Luffy on the team for situations where they want to play Ana and Izaki if they want to play Zen, so they have yeah. that flexibility. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming that's probably the uh, the idea with this uh, with this pickup. <coughs> um, then the next pickup that we saw uh, was a player who retired about two months ago. 
uh, coming out of retirement and joining the uh, Boston Uprising. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, we see, we see uh, Stellar, who was previously on the Toronto Defiant uh, before retiring and being replaced kind of by uh, I'm 37. Uh, we saw him coming out of retirement and joining the Boston Uprising. Uh, what do you what do you think of this? Uh, I mean, my general opinion about um, Overwatch League players, even just or esports players, retiring at like twenty four, I think is like somewhat ridiculous. So I, the fact that he's like coming out of retirement is like, I feel like there should be a different word for retirement. Like, <laughs> but that's just a bigger like issue in, in my mind. But. Um, I do. I do think he'll help Boston. I bet you know. In my mind, when when I heard about the two 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 lock, it's they were definitely a team that I was like, "Ooh, how are how are they going to fare?" Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but I do. I do think this this will this will definitely help them. Stellar's a very strong player. Um, do you think they'll? Do you think though that they'll uh, they'll do okay in two two two, or would they be kind of uh, as they are right now, which is like bottom five or something like that? Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see because I don't know. I I would assume I guess that RCK would be the um, we, might, we actually might see Axiom honestly because uh, there is the issue of if we see a lot of uh, Arisa Hog comps uh, like whether they have a competent Roadhog player on their team hmm. uh, and who like that's gonna be whether that is somebody like Axiom or if that is RCK. Um, but yeah, obviously they had very little DPS depth in their roster before this pickup. Uh, they just had Blase and Color Hex, and uh, neither Blase or Color Hex are a uh, particularly strong Tracer player. So mm-hmm. having the depth of Stellar, who is a very strong t- uh, Tracer player, uh, in case Tracer become, like, in case there is some, like, dive meta, uh, or if there is some, like, Tracer-based uh, composition that's very strong, uh, I think that is very important for them going forward. Mm-hmm. Um I think that overall this helps uh, Boston struggle a lot on goats, and uh, you know, at, at this point they're in a position where they can really only improve. Um, so, yeah. like any kind of shakeup is going to be good for some of these uh, lower uh, teams because you know there's nowhere to go but up, right? Like mm-hmm. it, it, it can't, you know, if you're going two and five or one and six or whatever, you can't you can't really get worse. Like you can't get like. Like if if you were to stay the same, it's like equivalent to getting worse, basically, because you're yeah. missing out on the playoff spot either way. Definitely. Uh, so yeah, I think that you know it, it'll be interesting to see what Stellar brings to the team with uh, how exactly they utilize their DPS core now. Um, and then the other uh, big trades that we saw uh, were with the Guangzhou Charge, uh, where first they traded uh, their player Kib to the Fusion for Fusion's player, uh, Fraggy, who is their uh, backup main tank. Hmm. Uh, and then they also picked up uh, Bishu, who has been uh, kind of, you know, well, he's been riding the bench on the um, the Gladiators, partially because, uh, you know, they have uh, stronger players like hmm. uh, Decay and Hydration, but they also... Um, you know, he's also had some uh, medical issues. He played a little bit in uh, Contenders at Gladiator Legions, the two-way contract. Um, and so it looks like he is going to be coming back kind of in full swing uh, for the Guangzhou Charge, who uh, I'm really excited to, to see where they go because they have been performing uh, much better. Yeah. And to see a player like uh, Fraggy potentially get some start time. I know a lot of people have been doing the, the hashtag free Fraggy. Yeah. And I know uh, because they've been disappointed with uh, Sato's performance, but it looks like now the Fusion are going all in on Sato as their main tank, mm-hmm. and uh, Fraggy is going to go over to the charge to see if uh, he can uh, perform there in case uh, they want uh, you know, what he uh, can bring to the table. Uh, I think that we might be seeing a movement away from Reinhardt on main tank towards more Winston and Arisa-based compositions. Arisa, yeah. Um, so maybe Sato uh, can perform better in that role, and the Fusion has uh, more confidence in him on that role. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll see how that goes. I'm very excited to see what the Charge do uh, in Stage 4. I think they have a lot of potential, especially with these moves. I'm excited to potentially see Fraggy and Bishu uh, back on the stage and playing rather than uh, kind of riding the bench. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. What do you think? I got. I gotta say, I think Fusion made the the wrong choice here. I, I do think Fraggy. They should have at least tried it out. I, I Sato <laughs> as as you know as <laughs> as good as he is to me has been has been lacking this season and. I think he's a good Winston. So if if this becomes, you know, Winston becomes heavy in the meta, or even Arisa, I'm sure he can. I'm sure he can get better at Arisa. Um, but I, I don't know. I just haven't seen the performances out of him this season. So I think they should have at least tried Fraggy. So I mean, that's good for Guangzhou at least. Uh, and they're definitely, as we mentioned, you know, earlier with teams only going upwards. That, that's I think the case with them, where they've just been getting better and better. It seems. Um, yeah. Yeah, when you talk about teams that could have the potential to get out of this like uh, seven through twelve play-in uh, bracket, I think the Guangzhou Charge are kind of a, uh, a dark horse contender. Mm. Um, so uh, we'll kind of see where that goes and follow it. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else you want to talk about in terms of uh, going into stage four, two, 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 or uh, these some of these moves? So yeah, I do. I do want to talk about two 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 in reference to uh, us as 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 non professional players and what this means for us. Uh, ben did predict uh, last episode quite cleverly that there will be three different SRs, which has been confirmed now. I think this is a really smart move on Blizzard's end. Um, having it as it currently is can feel a little bit unfair sometimes, and. You, Going into comp and even into quick play, actually more so into quick play, where as soon as the game starts, people jump on their you know their DPS that they're usually not even good at, at least on our on our um, on our games and our rank. You know, you see a lot of like Ash and Widows who like aren't getting any kills, and you just end up like losing the point. Um, having that be a a system where people have to wait to play these players i think is going to be really helpful because we're going to see branching out and they may they may realize like oh you know i can play zenyatta and he feels a little bit more like a dps if that's what i'm into or hey i can play arisa who has you know dps ish mechanics even though she's a tank uh at least you know you can shoot things i don't know i feel like people aren't willing to branch out currently and i think this is going to help a lot with that yeah, what 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 do you think as far as uh, it applying to us as as normal players? Yeah, I mean, obviously we talked about this in the last uh, episode we did, and I mean, I'm not, I wasn't the one who came up with the uh, like idea of role <laughs> queue and separate SR. I just like, I I agree with the idea that that's the best way to do mm. it, and I'm very glad that is the way they are doing it. Uh, and what I've you know what I've seen on um, on PTR is just like since I've played a little bit of the role queue system mm. is like, it's just, it's just better. Like the only like situation where I'm having a bad time is when I'm having throwers on my team. And they have mm. talked about that they're going to crack down on cheaters and throwers and like, mm. uh, be able to have, uh, like better things in place to take care of this issue. But like, yeah. you know, that's not like, no, no matter what system you have, if you're playing a team-based game, if you have some asshole on your team who's, you know, uh, intentionally throwing, then, like, uh, you know, that's going to be a bad time. But, like, in terms of, like, queuing into, you know, comp like, having a, a good composition, uh, queuing in with players who are performing in their role confidently, uh, like, having, you know, a good team who are communicating and, like, you know, actually functioning well, uh, having a lot less toxicity in general. Uh, I think so far it's just been a uh, success for my uh, my eyes, and I can't wait for it to go into like the live uh, live server. So yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I said last uh, the last time. I thought I think it's a, a necessary move. I think it's necessary fresh on professional level. Uh, I think it's necessary on the non professional level in terms of like the long term mm -hmm. health of the game. Uh, I know that most of the uh, professional uh, players uh, also agree with that. Uh, it was like overwhelmingly supported. Uh, it is unfortunate that it's coming at kind of an awkward time within the season. Uh, I think if, if they had their druthers, they would have done this at the halfway point in the season instead. Uh, I'm assuming that it was probably just more technically difficult to actually uh, accomplish than uh, they thought it would be. And so it took a little longer for them to get it right. 
and they wanted to make sure that it was it was right before they released it. Yeah. And so like this is this is just when it's released. It's it's being released as soon as possible. Um, and so I can't be uh, I can't be too upset with uh, with the timing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just, it, it's just in my eyes, just strictly better. Yeah, yeah. You have to imagine that they this has been on their plate since like before the you know uh, Overwatch League season has started, and ever oh yeah, since for sure, goats, yeah. goats has been prevalent. But yeah, I think I think this it's a really interesting discussion. I would love to discuss it more with guests and um if anyone's interested in get, uh being guest on the show definitely hit us up um we're definitely looking to collaborate a lot more uh with this show so yeah just leave a comment below or dm us um but i think let's let's move on to the 2020 season which we've gotten uh some a bit of news about and it's shaping up to be something quite different and I think in a very good way, but I'm curious to hear uh, your thoughts, Ben, and even other people's thoughts in the comments. Um, so really quickly, just to sort of sum it up, there will be 52 homestand uh, weekend events, which is way more than we've had. I think we've had, what, two this season? So Technically three. There was an, an LA one. Or right. there is going to be an LA oh, one. there's going to be an LA yeah. Yeah, right. There, so but it's not really a home stand because LA is like where the home games are, or where the games are like <laughs> exactly. naturally played. So like there, there has basically been two. There's the Dallas and the Atlanta. Exactly. So this is going to be massive as far as I can't even imagine their production, like the ch the shift in production for them. Mm -hmm. But I think this is going to make them a lot more legitimate. Uh, as far as we now have. Uh, what are called uh, conferences and divisions. So of course we had the Atlantic, Atlantic and Pacific division, which didn't really matter too much uh, besides like the all stars uh, weekend, I think. Um, but now these um, have a lot more to do with uh, who teams play. And um, as far as how the stages are uh, carried out basically. So we have the Atlantic conference and Pacific conference uh, with each with two divisions. So there's four divisions total, north, south, east, and west. I'm just going to really quickly go through them. North division, we have Boston, Uprising, London, Spitfire, New York, Excelsior, Paris Eternal, Toronto, Defiant. South division, we have Atlanta, Atlanta Rain, Florida Mayhem, Houston Outlaws, Philadelphia Fusion, Washington Justice. Pacific Conference, we have uh, East Division with Chengdu Hunters, Guangzhou Charge, Guangzhou Spark, Shanghai Dragons, Seoul Dynasty. West Division is Dallas Fuel, LA Valiant, LA Gladiators, San Francisco Shock, and Vancouver Titans. Now, this is this feels really interesting and pretty balanced to me. Um, one of the things that struck me immediately, <laughs> kind of nodding your head. I know there's a <laughs> lot of like like obviously West Division and I think North Division are like super super strong south divisions like kind of fucked but anyway they do have philly anyway we'll, we'll get into it but i do want to say but my first impression was that i'm so glad that we have you know you're a boston fan i'm becoming more of an nyxl fan i'm also a, a, yeah, a somewhat big paris fan even though they've been so disappointing um but i'm so glad that these are all now uh north teams um i I, I'm really happy with the North Division, even though I think it's going to be really, really insane for like production as far as like, you know, travel and, uh, uh, you know, just general like workflow. Um, anyway, I'm going to pass it to you, Ben. What do you What do you think of this? I'm very happy with the uh, the change to these four. Uh, so the, it's it's Atlantic and Pacific conferences, and then North, South, East, West divisions, right? I I always yeah. keep on flipping them. Okay. Yeah. That's so usually sorry, how sorry. it is is it's divisions under conferences. So yep. I'm very happy with the split up into divisions. I've I've been critical in the past of the current Atlantic Pacific uh, division split that has uh, been in effect for the first two seasons. Mm. Like you said, I don't think it really has any major bearing on anything. Uh, with the way that the playoffs are determined, it's basically just like the one and two seeds are the number one from each of the divisions. And uh, in this case, you know, if the shock passed the XL, it might matter. Otherwise, if it's if number one and two are Vancouver and New York, then it literally doesn't matter at all. 
-hmm. Like if the top two yeah. teams are one from each, there's there's basically no effect at all in terms yeah. of how it um, it you know affects playoffs. It's like very marginal at best in terms of like seeding things. Um, but uh, I think that what, whatever system they use, whether it's like uh, the first place team in each division gets a buy, and then there's like a wild card slot for the conference level, or if it's top two, uh, and then there's like wild card plans or something like that. Um, like whatever they do, it will matter a lot more how you stack up against the other teams within your division. And that's really good in terms of these like uh, these kind of ge geographically based uh, sports leagues because it uh, creates rivalries. Like the, obviously Boston and New York are a natural sport uh, rivalry in pretty much every single sport. Um, and you have like the two LA teams fighting against each other uh, at this point because of the amount of history they have this season, San Francisco and Vancouver have kind of a uh, rivalry between each other. Mm -hmm. uh, so like there already are kind of these pre-existing rivalries um, uh, in place. And so expanding upon the ability for these teams to like the, the thing you need in, in a successful sports league is you need storylines. You need, yeah. you know, like we talked about heroes and villains, winners and losers. You need, you know, rivalries. You need it to matter when teams play against each other. Exactly. Um, you can't like you know, it, like right now, who cares if Shanghai is playing Seoul, right? Yeah. Like they're both two strong teams, but like, but it's not it's not important. It's not different, right? But if yeah. if both of them are fighting for that one or two slot within this five team, uh, like division in terms of the uh, East division, then when they play each other, it's very important because that's like a one game uh, swing in either direction, mm. rather than like this half game swing. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, it definitely having teams, having it matter more in certain instances when teams are playing against each other is very important. And also something that, uh, we're seeing next season as kind of a side effect of the homestand uh, set up is the elimination of, uh, stage playoffs. Uh, so what do you think about that? I, I, I. I'm optimistic. I will say. I think this new system is is it has to be. It can only. I think it can only be good. Essentially, um, as it currently is, I, it's like you said. There doesn't feel like there's many storylines beyond like Titan Titans versus you know San Francisco Shock and you know New York London, which is less so a thing this this time around. This is going to add, like you said, storylines, and that's really what matters, especially for people to consider this a legitimate thing. I mean, Overwatch League, as we know from our view counts, it's not it's not a huge, huge thing. And, you know, at most we'll see like 100,000 viewers on a stream. That's usually in like stage playoffs. Usually uh, when things aren't like a homestand, or, you know, when things are just like an usual weekend, we see way less views. With these these interesting intricacies and these, these rivalries as they start to develop, I do think we'll see much more views. We'll see people kind of getting invested that are just from these different areas who may not even necessarily be that into Overwatch League um, right now. As far as like stage playoffs, they're fun. But, you know, I think we're going to, get that level of like hype and excitement more often in this in this new system at least that's my hope and that's my kind of my my feeling with it yeah no i agree i think that uh in addition the stage playoffs kind of feel out of place and they feel like they kind of get in the way of the seasons mm. uh like obviously it's nice for some of these teams to take a break um, but, uh, it, it definitely feels weird. And definitely when you're trying to talk about this with somebody who doesn't follow the league, it's, it's not a, like, it's not common or a thing in other leagues, uh, similar to how Overwatch League is structured for there to be these weird little mini playoffs that happen in the middle of the season. Uh, mm. so I think that just from like a, a marketing perspective, uh, it kind of, I know they want these events so they can have like these boosts in viewership and these mm -hmm. uh, these moments where people can get excited so they're not just kind of like dredging through a really 
long season. But I think that it's just it kind of it kind of breaks up the season in a way that uh, like kind of ruins some of the momentum, uh, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Um, and something else, I mean, you talked about uh, trying to get more viewership. I think that one of the things that they're doing as well uh, to improve that is I believe all of the matches are going to be on the weekend uh, now. So there's not going to be any more uh, these Thursday and Friday matches, uh, which is great because, you know, I don't want to be watching uh, a match that's going until one or two o'clock in the morning on a Thursday night. Yeah. Uh, and then also, uh, you know, the matches are supposedly going to be uh, which also makes sense uh, because they're going to be home matches. They're going to be uh, timed in a way where they are um, they're uh, applicable to the teams that are playing. So you know you aren't going to get, uh, for instance, uh, teams like European teams playing at like 4 a.m. European time. <laughs> yeah, uh, which I can imagine is very frustrating. It's even frustrating uh, as like a, a Boston fan watching like a a Boston match that's happening in LA starting at like 11 p.m., which exactly. is, uh, you know, or like 10, 11 p.m. or whatever. And it's, you know, one or two uh, a.m. in the morning uh, mm-hmm. in Boston. So uh, I think that both of those changes are also very good in terms of uh, curating viewership, uh, creating uh, more uh, intense geographically based fan base. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the league is wanting to do, it's trying to replicate the traditional sports model. And I yeah. think these are changes that uh, really lend itself to that, um, to that um, you know, the ability to, to do that in a better way. Definitely. I, I, I completely agree. I think this has to be, this has to be a good change. I don't think, I mean, there's probably an argument for <laughs> this. I don't know, maybe people, people get stuck in their ways or, you know, I guess though, you know, an argument could be, People are just getting used to the current system, especially with something like this that's trying to become legitimate. But I think in the long run, this is this is going to be this is going to increase the legitimacy. And you know, at the end of the day, it's Overwatch League. It's it's not baseball or basketball or football. It's not really taken uh, as seriously, or it doesn't have the fan base that is. Um, as dedicated quite yet. I mean, I, I definitely felt this during the Shanghai match. I mean, this was the perfect example of uh, Shanghai, you know, because they were the underdogs, because um, I've just been enjoying them so much this season and kind of been rooting against the shock, you know, after those three losses in a row where everything was on the line in this last match, I was feeling so emotional. I'm not, I'm not a huge uh, sports fan in general. I don't usually um, get that sort of that fandom and that disappointment and that excitement and that sort of roller coaster um creating stories like those where you can get people to feel that way that's really what they should be focusing on and it seems like they are uh so i'm really happy about this change um i am curious what other people think though uh if if you're um if you want to share your opinions with us definitely um you know, hit us up in the comments or DM us and we would happily have you guys on the show. Um, I think as far as uh, today's episode, I think we're just about wrapping it up. Ben, anything, any last, uh, any last words? Yeah, I'm very excited for stage four for 222 lock. I'm excited for the stage playoffs. I'm excited for the two of us uh, and uh, Brian and Jenny and uh, Alex and uh, Maggie, I think, are all going mm-hmm. to the uh, to Philadelphia for the finals. Yeah, uh, so we'll have some content for that. Like we we uh, we went to the Stage One uh, finals mm-hmm. in New York last year, and it was amazing. I'm very excited to to go and see uh, the finals live again. Uh, I'm very excited for next season uh, and these changes. I think that the home stand system is uh, a good. Uh, middle ground between what we're doing now and like true home games, uh, which we might see mm. in like season four, uh, when teams are like committing and actually building huge stadiums, like apparently Philadelphia Fusion are doing. Um, you know, but stadiums take a while to build. So yeah. in the meantime, this is a really good uh, kind of middle ground position to do. I'm very, I'm, you know, this is this is good. This is this is like, you know. It, we don't we don't get a, a chance to talk about like uh, you know all good news like we have yeah. so much good news exactly so much good news in this episode you know Shanghai winning two 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 lock 
uh, the changes uh, for the stage <laughs> and for the playoffs, the changes for next season. It's all good. Like exactly. th there's nothing to complain about. This is, this is happy stuff. I'm very I'm very excited. And uh, you know, yeah, leave uh, leave negative comments down below to so you can make <laughs> so me balance. sad. I guess. Yeah, <laughs> balance, balance everything it in the universe. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think as far as uh, <laughs> as far as today, we're all feeling very very excited for the future, and I um, hope that you are too. So yeah, thanks. Thank you everybody for watching uh, today's episode. Um, like I said, let us know if you want to be a part of the show. Make sure to leave a like on the video, leave a comment, um, subscribe if you haven't already, and uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll see you as stage four kicks in and. Um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Yeah. <laughs> follow us on Twitter. Oh it's yeah, follow, yeah. Time. Follow us on Twitter and Facebook and Twitch and YouTube and uh, Instagram. Instagram. Yeah, all of this. It's, it's it's like uh, we could get everything everywhere except for Twitter because Twitter doesn't have enough characters. Yeah. And there it's WG everything. Yeah. And follow oh. me on Twitter at Ben Sharon. Yeah. Follow Ben. All right. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.